Okay, so this should be Ford Land Rover off-road. Um, pretty unbelievable deal. Um, it's brand new and sealed, and I only paid £1.20 for it and £1.50 postage. So I'll open it up. Says, uh, thank you for buying from Tina. So yeah, I can't believe that I just paid £1.20 for this and it's brand new and sealed. That's unbelievable. But yeah, I've seen YouTube videos on this game and it looks uh, looks awesome. So let's uh, crack that seal open. It's been a long time since I've opened a sealed uh, PS2 game. The case feels uh, quite thin actually, it seems a lot more thinner than most of the PS2 games. So obviously there's no need for me to check the desk. Um, there's a manual. So yeah. Let's take a look at uh, Ford Land Rover, or should it be Land Rover Ford Off-Road? So, Ford Land Rover Off-Road, dear oh dear. This is another Ford racing game which got completely dissed in the reviews. It was released on the PS2 in 2008. Again, this one is also a budget game, so I guess I was expecting too much when I thought I'd be able to splash through mud and for the cars to get dirty, which, um, you know, these things obviously don't happen in the game. Um, like Ford Street Racing, you can only drive in automatic and there are no replays, but you do have music while racing this time, not that that's any consolation because it's only about three tracks of crappy generic rock. So I'll tell you about the features. It has 18 officially licensed Land Rover and Ford vehicles. None of them are cars, they're all basically pickups and 4x4s. The majority of them are Ford vehicles though. There's not that many Land Rovers in there at all. There's 24 tracks which exist in three different off-road environments which are desert, water and dice and there's real-time on-the-go vehicle damage repair which I'll go into a bit more later and 12 different race types There's a career mode and a tournament mode in the game The career mode is made up of races and challenges To advance through the career mode you need to come first in one of the well, you need to come first in the latest unlocked race and you need to complete one of the uh, one of the three challenges which come after the the race um, and then you'll unlock the next race and the next set of three challenges and when you complete races and challenges there's a lot of stuff you can unlock like tracks for the arcade and multiplayer modes and you can unlock vehicles for the uh, for the arcade and multiplayer modes and for the showroom and um, you can also unlock money which you use to buy the vehicles from the showroom and to uh, to repair cars in your garage. The tournament mode is pretty much the same as career mode except there are no challenges between the races so it's just basically a pure racing experience.
So the real time on the go damage repair is quite simple. When your vehicle gets damaged, not only is it cosmetic, which isn't a lot, just a couple of crooked bumpers there and a few scrapes there, your vehicle also loses performance. In other words, it's not as fast. But there are a couple of repair pods scattered around the track which you, uh, which you can drive through. And when you drive through one of the repair pods, it will, like, say if you, you have a damage meter on the speedometer, and say if it's filled 100%, if you've got 100% damage, if you pick up one of the repair pods, it will repair your damage by about halfway. Another way of repairing your vehicles is when you're not racing, you can go into your garage to check out your vehicles and you can repair any of your vehicles by percentage with cash. The more percentage of your vehicle that you repair, the more money it will cost you. As for the challenges that you get in between races, some of them are quite fun actually, while some others can be quite frustrating. To give you some examples, there's, you know, one of them is called Expedition, where you have to collect a certain number of artifacts within three laps, and each lap has a time limit. There's Overtake, where you have to overtake a target number of vehicles within a time limit. And Slalom, where you have to complete a target number of laps before the time runs out, without missing too many uh, Slalom gates. First I thought this game was really crap, in fact I was very close to just sticking it back on eBay, but for some reason I still had the desire to just keep on playing it. After a few days of playing the game and getting further through it, it began to feel quite fun. I think the reason why I thought it was really crap at first was because several of the early tracks look quite bland and you know they're, they're really empty and feel boring to drive through. Also the early vehicles that are available to you are quite slow, there's not much of a sensation of speed. and. Um, they're really quiet for some reason, so quiet that you can hardly hear them. All this changes however when you get further through the game. The tracks become a lot more interesting and fun to drive through. And um, the more powerful vehicles have a nice enough sensation of speed. And they actually sound a lot more louder and a lot more like 4x4 vehicles. handling of the vehicles isn't too bad actually. They handle pretty much like how you'd expect big pickups and 4x4s to handle. Now the graphics I've got to say I think they're pretty stunning. Not so much the vehicles although I still think they look good but the actual tracks, the scenery, there's a lot of detail and thought which has gone into how they look and how they're designed um, and also each of the tracks they uh, they have like shortcuts and long cuts and stuff, so it can be quite hard figuring out which you know, which um, which alternative routes are shortcuts or if they'll actually make it take longer for you to go, you know, for you to uh, complete the lap. Most of the game is quite easy, but it does get very hard towards the end. I don't think the game is that much longevity unless you try and get the best lap times on all of the tracks with all of the vehicles in the arcade mode. I quite like this game. I'm not sure if it's something I'll always keep. Um, I do have the feeling I might end up selling it back on eBay eventually, but who knows. I can definitely see that this isn't really a good game. I don't think I'd recommend it even though you can get it for extremely cheap. But I guess if you uh, if you really like the look of this game from the footage and you like the sound of it from the review, then yeah I think there's no harm in, uh, in taking a chance, you know. Um, you can get it for around a quid and like I said I got mine for like uh, £1.20 and it was uh, still brand new and sealed. So, Ford Land Rover Off-Road, it's, um, it's a bad game but I quite like it and personally I'd, I'd happily pay a fiver for it. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.